Here comes Ellie and Alyssa. This can only mean one thing. She stinks. She stinks. <laughs> we are going on an out of spec motoring road trip with the dogs. How long have people been asking for this? Two years. Two years. Has it really been two years been two since years. we've done an out of spec road trip with the dogs in an EV? We've taken them to Alaska in the Sprinter yeah. on our overlanding channel. But uh, hey, Blue, how's it going, buddy? This is a Rivian R1T road trip, towing road trip, all the way from here in Colorado. Where are we headed to, Alyssa? California. California, going to pick up the Lucid Air, throw it on the trailer, and then we are towing this out to California. We're going to drop off the Lucid Air. That'll probably be this episode. And then I may or may not have bought another car in California, uh, which we will be towing back. So let me explain what's all going to go on here. And then we're going to head out on our adventure in the Rivian R1T, towing the Lucid Air to California. It is the perfect fall day here in Colorado. Just absolutely beautiful skies and trees, no wind literally still pretty amazing uh, we have the rivian r1t charged up to 85 percent for those of you who don't know this has been uh our truck it's been amazing it is the four motor large battery pack version about 130 135 kilowatt hours we pull about 125 out of it because of some buffers and uh, loaded up is our new trailer we bought this to do some testing with just a basic trailer dual axle in the back it's about 10 or 11,000 pounds we can put on this thing. So more than enough for the Lucid. The Rivian can tow 11,000 pounds max as well. But everyone says towing is the worst part of an electric truck. And while, honestly, I sort of have to, do, to totally agree there, the charging times are quite long because you have to charge deep into the pack and then your range is really cut down. But we never really know by how much. And so um, our friend Peter loaned us his Lucid Air for a, pretty much the last month. And you've seen me road trip that out to Colorado. And we've done a ton with that car. And I didn't want to pile the miles on it. So I thought, hey, let's make a towing video, towing it back to California. I also, Alyssa just decided to come with me on this trip this morning. So I also bought another car that I like to bring back here as well. So we sort of needed, you know, two vehicles or one vehicle with a trailer. So my whole plan was just to tow anyway. And um, yeah, let's go see how this thing tows on a, I don't know, we're round trip gonna be about 2,500 miles, something like that. But out there, it's about 1,000, 1,100 miles, something like that to get out to Palm Springs. And um, we got the sport wheels and tires on the truck. We have the, the Lucid standard wheels in the back. For those of you who don't know about our reviews channel, that's where we review most cars. And I tested the Lucid on the 21s as well as the 19s in the back are the 19s and um, very thin tires, only 245s. That's how they get that big range, or at least it's part of why. There's a lot of other reasons as to why the car goes so far to charge. But um, we'll be using pet mode. It's our first time taking the dogs on a trip in the Rivian, so lots to figure out here. Totally different than our Model 3, which we did end up keeping. Some of you thought uh, maybe we sold the Model 3. I was talking about it. We did keep the Model 3. We also have the Model S, the e-tron, all the other electric cars, of course. But, um, and my Nissan Leaf, but we are taking the Rivian out to California. So how is this thing all packed up, Alyssa? What are we even bringing with us? Um, the dogs. Yep. Are they fitting okay back there? Yeah, we put a little hammock so they can use the whole seat. Should we leave a link to this hammock or is this not one we should recommend? Uh, I like it, but it's just a basic hammock. Just a basic car hammock? Yeah. Yeah. It uh, doesn't fit. I mean, it's not for this car specifically. Oh, I see. Okay. And then we have a Yeti cooler for all the dog's food. Got my pillow, got my book. Suitcases up front. In the front trunk, yep. Yep. I got some recovery gear, straps and things in the gear tunnel. Mm -hmm. Anything else we're forgetting? That's about it. Got Starbucks. You got Starbucks. And I'd like to make it to Utah tonight. It's about 1.30 in the afternoon. Our plan is to head over to Colton's shop. Again, another out of spec channel. Check out out of spec detailing if you don't already. He has the Lucid Air. He was just detailing it before we return it back to Peter. So we're going to do that. And then um, we're going to get lunch with Colton, I called him, by the way. So it's going to be a lax first part of this trip, and then we're going to hammer down out to California. Guys, I'm excited to be working again with Omaze to offer you the chance to win a Tesla Model X Plaid. All you have to do is go to omaze.com slash 
out of spec motoring for your chance to enter. Now it's no secret we're huge fans of plaids here. This is my Model S plaid, but the Model X plaid adds two more seats over a thousand horsepower, just one of the craziest, fastest seven seat electric SUVs on the market. You know that thing is just absolutely insane. I'm also pleased to announce that the entries go to support a great cause. In this case, they will support Reverb which is a really interesting organization that's working on cleaning up concerts and music venues. They've partnered with musicians such as Pink and Billie Eilish and others. Really an amazing organization. If you go to music festivals, make sure it's a reverb one. Definitely make sure you support them by entering the sweepstakes. So a huge thanks to Omaze for sponsoring this video. Omaze.com slash out of spec motoring to enter for your chance to win a Tesla Model X Plaid. So let's get the truck all set up for the trip. The first thing I wanna do is to turn it on and throw it into towing mode. So let's switch to towing. Uh, the next thing is empty trailer. We'll run two on the brake and I love that there's an integrated brake controller here so we can turn it up. Also, if we're running with a heavy load, I'll typically set the ride to stiff just to control the movements, but the trailer's unloaded right now. I think the trailer weighs about 2,500 pounds. Hey, Blue. Um, yeah, it has been a while since we've done a road trip with them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so they're excited to get out. These are some of the most well-traveled dogs that we've just kept at home, sadly, for the last little bit. The one thing I'm not loving about this thing is it's blocking their airflow. It's all the way up, so it should be hitting here. Okay, well, we can play around with that settings. Um, so we're in towing mode. The truck thinks 122 miles, a range of 84%. We'd actually probably get more than that with an empty trailer. But as we drive, it's gonna learn what's attached to it, how it'll all work. Honestly, this is uh, probably the biggest load we've towed over this much distance. We towed our Nissan Leaf back from Seattle to here with this mm -hmm. truck, but that was with a U-Haul trailer. This is our big trailer. It's an open trailer, which is good with the Lucid, which is slippery. So hopefully it all works out. So we're first gonna go to clear detailing to Let's see if it's in here anytime recently. There we go. Rancho Drive, heading over to Colton's. And if you haven't checked out out of spec detailing yet, highly encourage you to, if you're into paint care, I just put it in drive and, oh, pet comfort turned off and I had climate control off. I was wondering what happened. Um, great, and I'm also gonna go AC seat because it's warm out, 86 degrees. So are we ready to hit the road? Set that to 100 just in case we leave it at a charger. You ready for this road trip? Let's get her done. We're going to Palm Springs as stop number one. Well, stop number one, Colton, then Palm Springs. But it is 1.30 in the afternoon, so we'll have to find a dog-friendly hotel with charging, hopefully. La Quinta. La Quinta, really? Usually. La Quinta's are dog-friendly? That and Best Westerns. Best Westerns both don't sound like very nice hotels. Nope, that's why they allow dogs. <laughs> Fair play. So let's hope the trailer's all loaded up. This Bolt's been here. I wonder if our neighbor got a Bolt. Yeah, I thought, you told me that they got a Tesla, but now I see a Bolt. No, the these time. people got a Tesla. Oh, uh, yes. yeah. Yeah, so we just, the whole neighborhood's going electric all day mm -hmm. today. They have a key, uh, they have a Nero. Right, they have a Nero electric. Our whole neighborhood's been coming up to us somehow this morning, asking about electric cars, talking about cars. I mean, at least eight or nine different people we've had full conversations with about EVs. One of the guys happens to be pretty high up at the National Park Service, which was pretty cool. Yeah, We have uh, some really? cool. We have some cool neighbors. Yeah, and then another neighbor is, um, aren't they uh, with one charging company? Right, they work for uh, the New York charging networks, mm -hmm. actually pretty interesting so can barely even feel the trailer behind us what I'm gonna do is load up the camera and we'll hit the back view make sure everything's loaded up you can see our load distribution uh, set up here it's a really nice load distribution setup uh, typically when you're towing more than 5,000 pounds it's recommended to use it we use it for a lot of our towing tests and uh, really just smooths out that trailer balances out the weight helps helps out everything drives so much better uh, and, but once we load the Lucid up, then I'll tighten it and get it set. Right now, I just have it a little bit loose because it's not so needed. And uh, yeah, can't, can't ask for anything better. So we'll see you over at Colton's. It's about 15 minutes down the road, and that's where we'll start the full road trip. So we're all packed away here. Hey, Blue, where are you? And this is their first actual road trip. We went down to Salida with it. That's but, right. Um, We've taken them on like a few hour trips here and there, yeah. but not like a multi-day. No, not an overnighter. I mean, it's just been so long since we've actually road trip with them in an EV. At right. Least. Yeah, we've been using uh, our Sprinter a lot of the time. And they're apparently, <laughs> it's 
a little, little, little cram for space back there, but eventually they'll figure it out and, and lay down here pretty soon. But Blue's just amped and ready to go. He doesn't even know where he's he going. He likes to hang out right by Kyle's yeah. shoulder all the time. That's a yeah, cute. he's my side <laughs> airbag. <laughs> and um, Ellie just likes to potato. <laughs> yeah, I know, you're excited. He's so excited for his trip. And uh, yeah, so we're all, we're all gonna get this all figured out with the dogs and he oh, resumes his... he found his spot. This is where Blue normally sits on road trips. Which Always. Is, yeah, right up here. Don't you buddies. All right, you can't come up here, buddy. You gotta go back. Nope. <laughs> oh man. And here we are arriving to out of spec detailing. Looks like there's a Model S here. I know a lot of our viewers have been having their cars detailed by Colton. Colton was like, I have a full schedule. And then we started making videos with him. And now he's like, I have a really full schedule. So uh, I guess we'll park somewhere over here. Maybe we'll, we're gonna get lunch. Maybe we'll take the Lucid to lunch, leave this here charging on the level two I would uh, in put, pet mode. I would put it over there. Yeah. Right over there. Yeah. You join us over here at Colton's shop. Blue's been getting his energy out. Ellie staying comfortable in pet mode in the Rivian. Um, we're actually going to take the Lucid to lunch one last drive. I want to film one last video with it, which is here's everything I love and hate about the Lucid after living with it for the last month or so. Time for a haircut, isn't it? So Ellie's in here on pet comfort, just chilling out but they're both gonna hang out at Colton's shop. We're gonna leave the Rivian here, plug it in, and we're gonna top it up on the level two charger while we get food, finish filming with the Lucid, and ultimately load it up on the trailer. Here comes the Lucid pulling out of Colton's shop right there. Always good to see all the cars. We actually saw some viewers here who are getting their cars, uh, inquiring about detailing their cars. We have a lot of viewers locally, so thanks to you guys for supporting Colton's business. Really some of the best work out there, and, um, Yep, so let's go plug this in and go to lunch. So here we go. We got the Tesla wall connector with the J1772 adapter. They're plugging us in. If I go here, we have it set to 100%. Should be 32 amps at business voltage, 208 volts. Um, it always goes to unplug and try again, and then it will start up. No, leave it in there, and then it goes. It's a weird bug when you use a Tesla wall connector. It freaks out, and then it goes. See, there we are, charging. Three kilowatts. And I guess we don't need pet mode because the dogs won't be in the truck. So we'll let it charge up here. We'll take the Lucid to lunch. And that's a good way to start a road trip. Very lax start to our road trip, but that's okay with me. I enjoy those kinds of, kinds of road trips. And here is the Lucid Air outside, getting ready to be loaded up. Colton detailed it and it's looking truly awesome. He didn't do the full paint correction and everything that we actually wanted to do with it, mostly because the paint was too thin to correct. That's right, there's not enough paint on this car to actually correct it. And so I wonder if that's the case for multiple Lucids. We at least saw, I believe, Chicago Auto Pros did a video with theirs detailing, you know, sort of why their paint was so thin or, or I guess showing it. Um, we also have a video on out of spec detailing about this, but essentially we're just gonna take it to lunch, but wow, it's looking amazing. These are the 21 inch wheels Lucid sent out for our reviews. I have the car's stock wheels and tires in there. This car originally came on the 19 inch wheels and it just looks so much better on these. Um, Overall, yeah, really enjoyed my time with it. You guys will have to take a look at our reviews channel for all of the coverage. We also have a road trip driving it out here. I took it out here for a video and now it's time to load it on the trailer after lunch. So this will be 5,200 pounds plus 2,500 pounds. So we'll be close to 8,000 pounds on the back of this Rivian uh, plus, uh, you know, two dogs and two humans and all of our gear. So we are loaded up for this trip. It's gonna be freaking awesome. So Blue exited his containment zone here at Colton's place and we don't want him to damage any of the cars. So Alyssa is gonna show you how to put it on pet comfort just by clicking that little paw up there. There we go and we'll be plugged in on pet comfort and I believe we can monitor the temperatures from our phone just like a Tesla. So that way he'll stay plugged in. Hopefully the battery will get some charge. I don't expect the AC to pull seven kilowatts and uh, and he'll stay nice and cool in there. What a nice feature. Little lunch at the Mash Lab Brewing and uh, Restaurant, really an awesome place. They also build hot rods here, right Colton? Yes, sir. Pretty cool stuff, like two, $300,000 hot rods, like oh, crazy yeah. ones. Um, so we're in the Lucid now. It is booting up. We're waiting for it to finish booting up. 
everyone's like, it's got this instant boot software. Mm -hmm. It looks like it. <laughs> come on, Lucid, you can do it. Wow. Oh my God, come on, Lucid. Can we, oh, we can put, oh, there it There is. we go. Yeah, you can drive it as long as the main instrument cluster is on. But sometimes that takes even some time if you catch it off guard. Um, yeah, it's charged to about 50%, which is perfect for long-term storage. So that's great for bringing it out. And off we go back to the shop, load it on the trailer. Let's hope we can get this thing on the trailer. Got it lined up. Ready to launch. This is a really dry car. Yeah. Do we, do you need extension ramps? Let's see. A little dip here. The other thing you can do is put straight on. But isn't it just going to drop? It should, it'll drop a little bit. Let's see if that works. Keep coming. Oh, this makes me nervous. Damn, that's close. Is it in highest suspension? Sadly. I don't know if it's gonna go over this. Why? Right, we're good. Think? Yeah, hundred percent. You mean you're worried about this? Yeah. Oh, I'm not worried about that. Okay. Oh shit, that's low. Keep coming. You're good. Hello. Can you go? Hello, kid. Sender. Right on. Well, we're loaded up on the trailer. Um, definitely want, because the car has a very close to 50-50 weight distribution, we have the car pretty much centered over the rear wheels, but slightly forward. The Rivian can't handle too much tongue weight. I think only about 500 pounds plus or minus. And so we also have our load distribution hitch, which will help even everything out. Um, but that way we'll we'll take some of the, the tongue weight off the truck with that. But ultimately, I think uh, when we typically tow cars with this trailer, we have them. It always looks a little bit weird, but with the rear wheels so far back, we always have the cars evenly placed so that the trailer takes most of the weight. And the door can even open here on the trailer, which is great. Got up here, no problem at all. We just needed those little ramps. We can use wood or something when we get to California, no problem. But we're all loaded up and... Uh, time to strap her down we are just getting the lucid strap down and the dogs are really excited about it <laughs> blue just wants to play ball all the time although he's a little tired from playing ball what do you think Alyssa? you think he's ready for more he's always ready for more but whether heat stroke hits him yeah, yeah <laughs> and ellie just looks like she's dying <laughs> she hasn't done anything this whole time and four hours later, we're all loaded up. I mean, we're not, not that far off, right? Just a quick lunch. Just a quick lunch. All right, you ready to rock and roll? Ready to get somewhere. See you later. See ya. Apple Watch Ultra in orange. And Alyssa's got her too. So many people made fun of us for having Apple Watches. It's the power I don't know. Punch. What can we say? It's all the amazing things we did. So we made sure the straps were tightened down. I made sure that the shock and tilt alert was off. Uh, only comment about our strap job if we damage the Lucid in shipping. Otherwise, it's strapped down perfectly. <laughs> Actually, we strapped down every vehicle like this, so it's been totally fine. And uh, looking good. So let's rock and roll on our way to California. What's the next stop? Think we can make it to Frisco? Frisco? Yeah. Oh, on one charge? Oh, Frisco sucks. That charger's so hard with a trailer. Yeah. Edwards. Let's stretch it to Edwards. Edwards. I don't know if we can do it, but we're at 85%, 144 miles showing, lots of elevation gain to do. We may have to stop somewhere, buddy. Let's do it.
end over there, no? Go to the end one? Well, I just don't want to block in the ID4 and everything. No, so. coming from the other way. Well, it the just... charge port's on this side, so we could try and just nose it in. Yeah. And we have arrived to Lakewood where they've just added the new stations. Colorado, I should say EA is really putting quite a few stations in Colorado. 80 miles, we're in dense traffic, but 1.35 miles per kilowatt hour. What's your opinion on that, Alyssa? Uh, it's decent, but we're also on flat roads and we're in traffic, so that's gonna go. Yeah, so that's really not as bad as I was expecting. Now we are down to about 45% state of charge and I'd like to avoid the Frisco charger if possible. Um, I've kind of pulled in over here so a car can get by, so we're not really blocking the whole road. It looks like the 150 kilowatt, the old Chatamo station is dead, but I'm guessing the new charger is going to work just fine. So, yep, all is looking good. We're going to charge on the new one, juice up, 350 kilowatt. It does say it's load shared. I'm curious which one it's load shared with. But, um, yeah, let's get this thing juicing in, and then we'll figure out how much charge we need to get up the big hill climb into the mountains. Alyssa, we are right up to 218 kilowatts. That's what we like to see. Again, we're going to charge up just enough to get to Edwards. I really want to skip Frisco because that parking lot is such a disaster in the back of that Walmart. The other thing we really need to be mindful of is which stations EA is replacing through Colorado. Glenwood Springs just came online with the new stations like okay. we're using here. So really pleased with the new hardware. I think it's working out really well. Um, yeah, overall, you can see the old hardware dead, new hardware working. That's a good representation right there. So yeah, Edwards, how far away does it say it is? It's like 80 miles, something like that. Mm. 101 miles to Edwards. Oh, I don't know if we're going to be able to make that. Anyway, <laughs> we'll charge up to 80 or 90% and we'll see if we can do it just to avoid Frisco. Maybe. A new record for Rivian. I just saw 221 kilowatts before it dipped down. The last, the best I've seen before that was 220. So we know the battery pack is definitely looking good. We are tapered at this point, which is as usual. And this truck does not top charge wonderfully, but we are going to need to get a little bit of a high charge in here just to make it up. I like this spot. Actually, this worked out pretty well. A nice low curb that I was able to drive over. The Lucid keeps unlocking and locking all the time. So <laughs> originally the alarm was going off a ton, but I had to turn off all the sensors. I tried the first time. It must not have logged it, but these guys are doing great and we're just cruising on the trip. Check this out. It just came up and it said vehicle battery issue. You see that, Alyssa? System fault detected. Vehicle battery issue. Uh-oh. Service truck soon. Yeah, and it just stopped charging. We'll have to try again. I've unplugged us from the charger and everything is on. Turtle mode's on, drivetrain fault's on, battery fault is on. Let's see what happens when we put it in gear. It moves, goes forward and back. But all the lights are staying on. Usually that would reset it. It says preconditioning system fault detected. Service truck soon. Trailer brake ready is good. Well, I'm going to plug it back in and see what happens, all right? All right. Otherwise, we may not be going. Going home. So I just uh, posted on Twitter that our truck was, uh, you know, having some issues. And uh, someone commented that it happened around the same state of charge to him while charging. And then he also plugged in. He got about four or five kilowatt hours. We only got one. But he said he did a hard reset on the truck or a soft reset. It's where you hold the hazard light and the left thumb wheel on the steering wheel. Reset the truck. And then he said it was totally fine. So we're going to try the same. Blue, back. Come on. Let me get in. Come on. I got to get in. You can't drive. Move over. I'm pushing you one way or another. All right, so take a look here. If we go in, you'll see all the lights are still on the dash. We still have all of the issues, system fault detected. So I'm gonna hold the hazards and the left scroll wheel here like this. And then you'll see here, uh, everything's popping up. Vehicle diagnostic captured is what it says. I think this is the right way to do a reset. Yeah, keep holding both buttons, vehicle restarting soon. And if you look on the screen here in the center, You'll see there's a, as Blue licks the phone, uh, you'll see that there's a little countdown to restart. So I think I'm okay to let go of everything and to turn off the hazards. But I like that it captured the diagnos diagnostics. It's restarting the system and um, hopefully we'll be good to go. We'll plug it back into the charger, get enough juice to get in the mountains. 15,000 miles now on this truck. This is our first issue. I would say we've had little things like my air compressor went out, the tonneau cover, little issues, but this is the first major breakdown, if you will, drivetrain related fault.
We're 57% restarted, restarts all the systems in sequence. Well, let's see what happens. Alrighty, well, we just completed the reset, took about, I don't know, about a minute or so. Vehicle on, and we're good. All the faults have cleared, I would say. Let's take a look. Yep, hey, nice. What's interesting is another Rivian owner who commented that this happened to his truck said it also happened on the new EA stalls. So that could mean maybe they're pushing too much power to the truck. Um, I don't know. We've also seen like over delivered power with these where we got 351 kilowatts on the Lucid. They definitely seem to like push it to the max. So let's see if we can get our spot back. I'm not totally convinced we can. The other Rivian left. The other Rivian left. So we'll have to go figure out how we can get back our spot. But glad we reset it. And I think that's all good. Um, my guess is that I don't really know what to say, but if it's happening on the new stalls and we've also seen some really big power on these new ones, it may have just been more than the Rivian was requesting. We saw that with the early Signets with Tycon uh, when we were doing our Cannonball that they gave too much power and freaked the car out. So maybe the same thing's happening here. It's just all speculation from our side. We'll have to see. Okay, not good news. We came back over here and it stopped again. So it says update successful, but we didn't update the truck, right? No, it's the yeah. same thing. And it says system fault detected battery issue. I did notice that the charger was delivering 150 kilowatts right there when the truck should only be getting about 60 to 80. Maybe you put it to the smaller. I know, I would like to use this charger, but it's currently dead at the moment. So there's only the new 350 kilowatt ones to choose from. Uh, do you think we just head out and uh, continue the journey? No? Not with a broken truck. Okay, so. I don't think it's the truck. I think the chargers are giving it too much power and the truck just is faulting out because of it. Again, speculation or the truck's asking for too much power and the charger's giving it what it wants. I don't know. I don't know why this has to be hard. I don't know what to do. We're on the phone with Rivian support to see if they can pull any logs to see what's going on. They're honestly pretty great. This dude um, didn't really know what so he's grabbing, I guess, his technical uh, boss or something help. like that. Right back, let me go grab someone and we can get this figure. So you try, like you said, you tried the vehicle reset, it's still throwing that code. Yeah, so, so my it's guess. Yeah. So this is uh, interesting. Not sure what's going to happen here. Uh, luckily, we're not too far from home when this happened, and the Lucid keeps unlocking and locking, and this truck keeps unlocking and unlock and locking because Kyle keeps walking around. So it's just a light show over here that uh, Blue and I are just enjoying along with Ellie. Uh, yeah, this is this is interesting. Kyle's on the phone with uh, Rivian support to see if there's anything to be done. But um, yeah, we'll we'll let you know. Well, this doesn't look too promising. Kyle is doing something else other than talking to them, so they must not really know what's going on, and they're trying to figure it out. And uh, just, just not quite sure if we're gonna ever make it there in time. That's my biggest concern at this point. Well, I've been on the phone with uh, Rivian support for the last 10 minutes or so, and those guys are just so awesome. You know, we can basically just, I love it when I can just skip the BS and get right to nerd talk. And so the theory is right now, and again, just the theory, uh, is that the chargers might be doing what I call charger creep. You know, there's a thing in turbocharged engines where you get boost creep, where you end up getting more power than what you're looking for, more boost than what you're looking for. And uh, older Signet chargers on, uh, on Electrify America when we were doing the Tycon Cannonball run used to give 270, 271, 272 kilowatts to Tycon and it was very German and it's like, no, I want 270. And as soon as it went up to 272, 273, it shut off the whole thing. The car went into turtle mode, fault mode. Same thing we're seeing here where we just saw 150 kilowatts delivered to the truck at 74, 75% state of charge where the truck is, I know because I've done charging logs, only asking somewhere in that 80 kilowatt range. So that's my theory. I let the Rivian guys know that. They're like, well, that sounds pretty plausible. What Basically what we're in the situation of, they're like, hang out in the parking lot. We're gonna go through all of your logs. These guys are awesome. They're gonna spend the next 30 minutes figuring out 
what I've asked them to do, which is, can you tell me the current request from the truck during the charging session? And was it getting more than what it was requesting? In that case, the truck did everything fine. It shut off charging. It went into self-protect mode because it doesn't want to fry the battery. So that would be the truck doing the right thing. Or was it actually getting the power it was looking for and then there was a separate fault inside the truck that caused it to go into this mode? In that case, we probably won't go on this trip and we'll have to end it early. If it was the charger delivering too much power, well, I think we can work around that. So um, let's see what they say. I think maybe we'll grab a bite to eat or we'll do a little shopping or something over the next half hour and then we'll hit the road, but not a good start to the trip. All right, dogs, you will be staying in pet comfort, and uh, we are going to get some nachos, right, Alyssa? Yeah. Yeah, nachos! Good thing about getting stuck. Yeah, well, it's always an adventure. Plus, it makes for good YouTube content. Great content. Are you guys enjoying this content? Comment and like below if you are. Also, every time we get near the Lucid, the lights go on. I wish we could turn that off, but the, the way that they're projected right at the truck, they are so blinding. <laughs> I might end up just trying to cover up the lights with some painter's tape or something, because it's crazy bright. Anyway, Yard House is just over there, so let's go get some food. Alyssa, we just got our first call from Rivian Service. They said, no update, but they promised to call me, so that was really nice of them. Those guys are awesome. We were just having a good time on the phone, but look at what's arrived. Nachos, baby. Happiness. Happiness, hell yeah. So, our friends at Rivian PR called and they're gonna try and get an engineer to log into the truck faster than, so we have the Rivian service team and then we have the Rivian PR team trying to find an engineer to log in because ultimately I just wanna know if it was truck or charger. If it's charger, we're continuing on the trip. We'll find out. What the heck are you doing with this thing? Don't show my trainer. T, if you're watching, this didn't happen. <laughs> no, you can watch me eat. Well, guys, we just finished up a nice little nacho and cheesecake meal. Take a look, the station's empty. So um, we've actually received quite a few responses on Twitter. Rivian Service is digging into to, to the logs. Did I just stutter there? You did, <laughs> it, did, did. It's getting chilly out here. Um, so here's the plan. I don't think it's the truck. I think based off of enough responses on Twitter, I'm not guaranteeing this because I don't want EA to sue me. I don't know this oh, to be Lord. true, <laughs> but I'm just saying multiple Rivian owners have commented saying that on the new hardware, their trucks have faulted at 72% state of charge, just like our truck. What we're gonna do is reset it. Since this is empty, try a different charger over here. Again, the 150 kilowatt charger, the old ABB that we shouldn't have an issue with is offline and not working. Either way, I think the truck's fine. So we're continuing this trip. We're going deep into the mountains. We're going all in. And if we get stuck up there, we'll pull the Lucid out the back. And come and back home. Wheels. <laughs> What's the Lucid charge to? Uh, 50%, Okay. I think 45%, which uh. is still, you know, 200 and something miles. Right. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, we're going to plug the Rivian in. If it falls out again, no problem. Up into the mountains we go. We're gonna sneak up on the dogs. <laughs> they were just chilling. So we're going back to the charger. Yeah, so letting the truck sit cleared the code, which we've seen some of our commenters said the same thing. So again, I really don't think it's a truck issue at all. Truck's fine. Um, so we're gonna try a different charger. We're gonna try charging it up to 90%. And the way we're gonna try a different charger is coming at it this way. Again, empty parking lot, full lock, right there and everyone can move around and get by. So let's juice it up. Let's hope we don't get a fault. All right, here we are, plugged in, 75% state of charge, 87 kilowatts. That's too much. It does not want 100 kilowatts. It doesn't want 114, I'm telling you that. It doesn't want 130, it wants 86 at this state of charge. The truck doesn't want 150 kilowatts, unless it's just pulling up pack voltage, but it should just sit around 80 kilowatts or so see what happens here 120 I've never seen 120 kilowatts at 75% state of charge 
That would be crazy if that's what the truck's asking for, but it might be, I don't know. 1.2 kilowatt hours delivered, 120 kilowatts going in. Maybe it's just trying to pull up pack voltage. Time will tell. I'm gonna charge it up to 90% though, if this thing all continues. But wow, that is the most amount of power I've ever seen at this state of charge. That is pretty crazy. Now we're down to 82 kilowatts. Now we're back to where we should be. Okay, so maybe it just needed to pull everything up or maybe it had just enough time to work out its signaling, but that's that seems right to me. 80 kilowatts here, which is what we're getting right now. That's where we should be, absolutely no question. So maybe we're good and we're just gonna juice it up and continue on the trip. And all seems good here so far, four minutes in. I think we're good. We're gonna continue. We're gonna charge up to 90% and then shoot for Edwards. So here we have an e-tron that also faulted out and stopped charging. The charging limit in the car is set to 90% state of charge. The charging port indicator here actually went red showing that there was a fault on the car detected. The charger didn't detect a fault. So a very similar issue to what we saw with our Rivian just a few hours ago. My guess is these chargers are a little bit buggy and might be faulting out the cars. Not totally sure, but we should be getting pretty close to head up into the mountains. 90%. We are going to unplug and head out, but uh, really good to talk to this e-tron owner. Great to see other electric car enthusiasts out there. So enjoy the rest of your day and let's head out into the mountains. So we have about a hundred miles to get up to Edwards. The truck says 129. We're going to go nice and slow and see if we can stretch it over there. Charged up to 90%. Yeah, I really don't think it's a truck issue here. If the Audi's faulting out and our car is faulting out. Wow, sketchy. Let's hope the Rivian lights stop blinding us on the drive and off we go then. Hello, this is Kyle. We are not connecting you with the Rivian service support advisor. Please help. This call may be monitored and recorded for quality Rivian purposes. Service. Hey, Kyle. Hey, how's it going, sir? Oh yeah, no worries. Um, so basically just to let you know what we did was, I'm fairly certain it's the chargers because there were also, uh, just recently there was an Audi e-tron GT that faulted out on the charger for a similar thing would be my guess. Okay. And so we, um, you know, I obviously the truck reacted in a way to show all the faults because I think it was getting too much power is, is, is my guess. But if, if your team could give me a call tomorrow to confirm that, that'd be great. But we're just gonna continue on the trip. Johnson Tunnel this way, Eisenhower, Edwin Johnson Memorial Tunnel is the full name according to that sign. Take a look ahead. Here we are. We have crested the top. We've averaged 0.58 miles per kilowatt hour over the last 15 minutes. Getting up to this point has not been pretty. 128 miles under one mile per kilowatt hour since we left Fort Collins. Uh, and even some of that was without the Lucid, but the Lucid is unlocked is blinding us so I have to keep the key on me to lock it so that we stop getting blinded from the car. <laughs> I don't know why I did that. Um, yeah maybe we should turn off proximity unlock and lock next time we go in it. But um, right now current situation is trying to stretch it to Edwards. We're at 36% uh, state of charge. We have 52 miles to go. The truck's only predicting 40 miles. But again, we've just crested the top. We have some more hills to do. I'm not so sure if we can stretch it. The other thing I really don't want to do is climb these big hill climbs at low states of charge. It's A, not great for the battery pack, and B, I don't want to brick with bottom voltage. Um, and so we may end up having to stop in Frisco. The thing is, we always say aero affects towing more than weight, um, except when you're in the mountains. That's when weight really affects you. And I'm actually pretty displeased with Rivian's regen, uh, especially when towing heavy loads. 
and I'm sure we'll feel it on the way down the mountain here, but we only get a short peak of regen before it backs us all the way off, and then we're back to using friction brakes. Sometimes if I pull pack voltage back down and hit the throttle, we'll get another little spike of regen, but we can't sustain big regen for long distance, um, which would be really good for recapturing energy here in the mountains, especially with a load this heavy. So 50-50 chance right now if we're gonna make it to Edwards or we'll stop at Frisco, but uh, time will tell, I don't know, 52 miles with 35% state of charge up here in the mountains might be a bit too much to ask for. I didn't expect this bad efficiency. Also, it was chilly. It was 30, uh, 36 degrees before we entered the tunnel. The tunnel's always a bit warmer. So we're just gonna start slowing down here a little bit, using a little bit of regen. I love that I have my trailer brake control right here on the steering wheel if I need to pull the trailer uh, to slow down with the uh, electric brakes on there. And uh, now we got the steep decline. Well, I'll let you know if we have a regen limit, but I'm sure we will uh, here momentarily. So let's just scooch around this truck. And here we go, starting the climb down the hill. Regening right now. And let's see how this goes, actually. You guys can stick with us. This is one of the toughest parts of the drive. Uh, through here. Thankfully, we have big friction brakes on this truck and trailer brakes, which really help smooth everything out. One thing I've noticed, though, is even with big regen, it does not blend in any trailer brake, um, which I think is smart because we're trying to recapture as much energy as possible. But it is something to know when you're loaded up how to uh, control everything. So a 0.57 miles per kilowatt hour. We're at 34% state of charge. We'll see if we gain anything by the time we reach the bottom of the hill but uh, looks like there's road work down the mountain here. Just need to be super vigilant of everything. And uh, yeah, not quite cold enough for ice at the moment right now, but it certainly was the other day. Here we go, regen limit, take a look. We're losing all regen coming in there. So that is all of the regenerative braking we have right now. It's completely backed off and um, we're actually gaining speed. And it says regenerative braking reduced, use brake to slow down. So that is what we are doing. Uh, if I hit the throttle a little bit, you'll see that actually drops down and now we'll get a big spike of regen, but then it starts with the limit. So having to use friction brakes here just to maintain speed down a little bit. We want to be really mindful of our braking applications, of course. But all part of the fun of towing up here in the mountains with the Rivian. It's certainly putting a, a load on the truck and we're unable to recapture as much as we want back in the battery back back to uh, friction brakes here, so I'm thinking we might have to stop in Frisco depending on how this all goes. Welcome to Frisco. 40 miles of range projected, 35%. It was what, 45 miles to Edwards? And we have to go up Vail Pass, I believe. So just don't think we could do that. Uh, let's get this thing juicing up here. The Lucid keeps turning its lights on and blinding everyone. So the key is getting to work out. I'm gonna go in there and shut off passive entry. So uh, let's get this charger activated. I might need to pull up just a hair, but really like this spot because we're kind of out of everyone's way and people can get through. We've charged at this unit before while towing. It's a 350 kilowatt unit. So let's hope all is good. Activated, ooh, it is cold weather season again. The cables are starting to get stiff and they're freezing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it is getting chilly out here. So let's see, let's make sure we're charging up. The Nero EVs plugging in, initiating charging. Let's get 
something uh, going. One of our friends is here who works on the EA charger, so it'll be cool to oh, talk yeah. to him a little bit about what happened at the last stop. <laughs> Getting great speeds here, about 200 kilowatts, best we can ask for. We have some of our friends are here. We met some Nero folks who are now viewers. It's all a party at the EA stations, but we don't need to top up much. We're just gonna run into Walmart, get some things, and then we're back out on the road, right, Alyssa? What, what? Got a couple of things here. Yeah. Also, before we go and check out, I just wanna mention, we talked to Rivian just now. Mm -hmm. They called and they said 100% it's the charger, and they're seeing these chargers brick trucks left and right. They're saying the chargers are not outputting a consistent current, mm -hmm. and it's freaking the trucks out. The same thing like it freaked out that e-tron. Makes sense. So the new hardware, seemingly not operating to spec. It's my feeling all along. I just couldn't say anything. Now we have confirmation. It sucks. Yeah, I mean, it's just about at the freezing temp right now. You can see the parking lots full of Sprinter vans and everything over there. Welcome to the mountains. But um, we are going to leave here, head to Edwards, and I think we're just going to have to charger hop our whole way across the mountains, one-to-one -one with a weight this heavy. And again, not getting much regen on the downhills. We are going to be burning the juice, baby. Well under one mile per kilowatt hour. Jeep club over here. Oh, Colorado 4x4 Rescue and Recovery. Big shout out to those guys. They're the ones who get you out on the trail if you're stuck. Oh. Yeah, it's a really cool service and mostly volunteer run. So big props to them. And they uh, they go, I think, all year round. They're really cool. All right. Well, uh, hopefully we don't ever need to call them. But we got the dog sitting in dog mode and we're getting ready to go here. Our friends are taking some photos of the truck. And here we are, charged up to 74% now, just chatting with some friends. And I think our next stop should be Edwards. I don't think there's a way we could make it to Glenwood Springs from here. Although it's possible, we should look at the numbers. Maybe we can skip Edwards, but that's right off the highway, easy to get to. And those are the newer Signet chargers. So that would be my preference, is just to do a quick stop in there. Alyssa, you having trouble opening the truck there? Yeah, well, because I turned off the key. Uh, how are the dogs doing? Hey, Blue, you having a good time? Uh, oh, oh, it's gotta gotta see what we get. Gotta inspect the Kate. Yeah. And there's Ellie. She's she's just doesn't know where she is. Somewhere in Ellie's planet. <laughs> So just to give you an idea of where we are, we left Denver, drove up here to Frisco, got terrible efficiency, and then we have a couple more passes to go through, and then it starts to level out and go downhill. This is the Edwards Charger. It's only 40 miles away. And then this is Glenwood Springs, which if we take a look here, should be 91 miles. We can do 91 miles. We have 88 projected. So there, it's actually gonna be probably even a little bit better if we just stop here. What's interesting is when we reset the truck, it switches the energy calculation into miles an hour. That's what we want to see, kilowatts. Um, we also, yeah, I mean, it's just crazy that those new chargers are bricking the cars. I really hope they can figure that out with a software update to the chargers, because that's a shame that so many people are having issues with the new ones. Honestly, that was the first time we had an issue with the new chargers, but that's a really bad one, and multiple people had it there. So um, yeah, I say next stop, Glenwood Springs. It says 55 miles on arrival if we left now. I don't really know if that's taking into account the trailer, but overall, I believe it's a net neutral elevation between here and there, maybe even down a little bit. So we'll charge up until the truck hits, let's just say 85% state of charge, and then we'll be more than enough to go, I think. Whoops. And we are pretty much now charged up to 85%. Not that bad of a trip. Alyssa, are you ready to continue driving through the night? Yeah. Hell yeah. How are the dogs doing? Good. Sleepy. Aww. So cute. I'm glad they're finding their space back there. I'd say it's pretty good. It's decent, but it's not It's decent. Great. R1S coming to a channel near you at some point. Don't really? you think? <laughs> well, maybe not till 2024. But yeah, but we are going to have one on review. What you holding your nose for? Mm -hmm. A bloody nose. A bloody nose. Oh, no. You do get those, especially as the weather drops. So it is getting brisk out here. So let's unplug 85% state of charge. The Lucid. God dang. I just went in the car to find any proximity sensors I could. The answer was couldn't find any. So charging stopped. Unplugging. Boom. Off we go then to Glenwood Springs. We have the bailout in Edwards if we need to, but we're just gonna cruise nice and slowly and try and cover some distance. Charging at night, driving at night with a trailer is a life hack with an EV because the parking lot's empty. We can get right up to the chargers. We don't have to unhook. You see, it'd be a little bit more difficult to unhook with our load distribution system because that's not only the trailer I have to do, I have to undo all of these high tension 
cables, which is doable, takes me an extra few minutes, but would try to avoid if possible. So let's get the heck out of here before that dude backs up to the back of our trailer. Welcome to Glenwood Springs. Saw coyotes running around over that way, so I don't think the dogs are gonna go out, at least not without supervision. But uh, check it out, new stations here. Um, interesting, new stations, old branding. They've been going through and updating the stickers with their new style recently, but let's get this thing going. We're at charger number one, and let's see if that 70% uh, situation happens again. Wow, did the elevation really help us on this stretch. We really came in with tons of juice. Um, yeah, like way more than we expected at 40%. So really need to start looking at some elevation profiles. Let me get the charger activated and talk about what we did wrong that last stretch. We are plugged in and charging and <laughs> blue. <laughs> when he gets tired, he gets so grumpy. It's so funny. Uh, so yep, yeah, we are just starting to charge, but looks like all is going to go good here. And yep, yeah, we are now juicing. Um, yeah, huge elevation change on the way down here, like really so much. So on flat ground, I've told you many times, and it's so true, it is not about what you're carrying, it's all about the shape. So the weight doesn't matter so much, it's all about the arrow. Here though, in the mountains, weight plays a big factor, and we have a really heavy trailer. So we lost a few thousand feet of elevation, but we really had huge efficiency. I mean, must have been three miles per kilowatt hour or so coming down the hill, maybe more. And so really impressed there. Um, what we've done is we've booked a hotel, listen one on hotels.com, which is just an app that we use. And uh, I have a membership for, we get every 10th night for free maybe we should look into playing more of the hotel game for points and stuff, but we have no real secrets for you. Uh, we decided that it wasn't worth looking for hotels with charging stations because most of them we would have to unhook the trailer anyway, and I really don't want to do that. So we'll just park this thing in the back of a lot somewhere. We'll DC charge it, which is really no problem at all. Um, it is midnight right now. Our next city over from Glenwood Springs is Grand Junction. That's where we're heading from here. I don't know the exact distance to get over there, but... Um, yeah, maybe about 90 miles, something like that. 80 miles, 90 miles, some, somewhere around there. But... Um, yeah, so, so need to look at elevation more. So when we drive a Tesla through here, the energy calculation will tell us, hey, here's how much we predict you to use throughout the drive. With the Rivian, it gives you a mileage readout, but I don't get to see like where it thinks we're gonna regen, where it thinks we're gonna output power. So I've actually mapped elevation profiles for this whole drive back when we did the Tycon Cannonball. And so I think I just need to reference some of those documents. Either way, we're definitely gonna overcharge here uh, might take a quick little five minute cat nap uh, just to get enough uh, recharge of the driver to get into Grand Junction. But we do have a hotel booked uh, that's dog friendly. And we also called the hotel because sometimes they have certain dog friendly rooms that you need to reserve. So we've re reserved the dog friendly rooms directly with the hotel. 
and all is good. So we're gonna let this thing charge up to maybe 80, 85%, and then we'll head into Grand Junction. That way the truck will sit overnight with a good amount of charge. It is cold enough where I'd probably recommend charging uh, before you go to sleep. However, we're too tired. We'll just wake up in the morning. There's a Starbucks nearby. We'll throw the truck in the charger, walk over to Starbucks, and that'll be a good way to start the day. And here we are, juiced up to about 85%. Again, I definitely put a little bit extra in there so the truck didn't go to sleep or sleep all night with a low state of charge. So we're doing 50 kilowatts at 85%. By the way, these are the new chargers and we did not have an issue around that 72, 73% mark, just like we've seen. Again, I've charged the truck high on these before and that was the first time I've seen this issue. But here we are at 85%. We were here for about a half hour, cost just over $16, 54 kilowatt hours delivered. Not the best charging session. If I had timed this a little bit better, we would have pulled in at you know, 10 or 15% state of charge. It's not great to run it all the way down with a trailer, but uh, then that would have been a little bit better. Not digging this new handle design, if I'm honest, but since it'll sleep overnight, we'll close that. We'll go here. It's 85 miles to our hotel, about an hour and 15 minutes, according to the truck. The dogs are snuggling back there <laughs> and uh, Alyssa is out cold. So let's go, which we should be there at, let's see what time it's predicting. Almost 2 a.m. Let's do it. Welcome to La Quinta. It's about two o'clock in the morning. Lucid, turn the lights off. Um, what time is it actually? 1.57? We're at 1.52. We're at 29% state of charge. Um, really good run. <laughs> Barely can feel the trailer behind this thing. This Rivian tows like a freaking monster. And uh, this is what we expected to arrive with. I wanted to have some juice in the battery pack. We're only about four miles away from the charger. And so in the morning, we'll set the charger preconditioned as much as possible and then get over there. For now though, I'm gonna get us checked in. Alyssa's going to walk the dogs and then it's time for bed. It's been a long day. We just getting our potty break on before we go to bed. Hopefully that's soon here. And we'll see you guys in the morning. And a good morning to you from the La Quinta. Now that was an awesome hotel. Yeah, it was. Really nice. They had, I mean, just nice on the inside. No popcorn ceilings. If it's popcorn ceilings, I'm not into it. But that was pretty great. Uh, I'm gonna just double check, make sure the Lucid's tightened down. Everything's looking good. Doesn't look like anyone damaged anything last night. Grand Junction's over here is not not the worst side of town so we're no worries here but um yeah we're ready for a day full of motoring the dogs were great last night they had a fun time at the uh at the hotel i think they were just chilling and uh yeah really a great experience breakfast the whole bit all good uh we didn't grab breakfast though but uh, highly recommend la quinta here right off of i-70 in grand junction never done it before so what we're gonna do is Get in the truck and drive today. That's the plan. I'd like to get to Palm Springs. It's 11 hours driving without charging. Again, we're starting the day at pretty low state of charge. We rolled in at two in the morning. It's about 9 a.m. right now. And so um, got a full night's sleep and we're ready to, to cover some distance. So the Lucid is all strapped down. Really just had to go one click on the rears. Um, we are heading to the Grand Junction Charger, which is pretty far off the highway. It's about 10 minutes off of the highway and then yeah. we can come over. Yeah, you remember that? Yeah. But there's a Starbucks and there's a Chick-fil-A nearby. Good, good. Yeah, great. And so then next stop, Green River after that, we, uh, we are out. Let's do it. See you, La Quinta. We'll see you over at the Charger in 10 minutes. 
and here we are pulling into the Walmart location. No, it's not Walmart, it's Sam's Club. Take a look, Alyssa. You can see what we're doing here, pulling into Sam's Club. And um, this is always a tight parking lot during peak hours. I'm hoping it's not so crazy right now. And you can see an Ionic 5 there, just plugging in with a whole bunch of boxes around. So maybe he's working on the chargers, what the heck? This charger uh, had an issue last time, didn't it? Yeah, so I'm just trying to figure out, yeah, it looks like they're, they're replacing components inside that broken charger. That one's been broken for a long while. So that's cool to see them working on it. Uh, I'm gonna pull in from this side and charge up on this 150, because that's available and that 350 is not. So we'll do a loop and we'll pull in here. We've done it before, maybe not with a trailer this big, but hopefully we can do it and not block anyone. So I think we got ourselves pretty lucky here. And here we go in for final approach to the charging station. What we're gonna do is try and nestle our way in. Now what's nice is that other charger is broken so I can really try and get this thing as far over as possible and out of the way but still while reaching this charging handle which is gonna look something like that I imagine. Let's hope we're not blocking anyone. And you can see here traffic is passing by and we've left space. We also are right over here to the charger so let's get this thing plugged in and uh, again it's only the 150 kilowatt but that's okay we are fine with any kind of juice while towing good morning blue how you doing buddy why are you so interested in the door handle nothing happened <laughs> um charging up at 152 kilowatts very nice so we're going to charge up just enough to make it to green river because if we charge up with some buffer it's not going to make any difference there's no bailout options in green river so we're either working or we're not. <laughs> Happy doggo this morning. How's Ellie doing? Hey Ellie. Oh God, not doing great. Hey Ellie, how's it going sweet girl? Getting whacked in the face? Hey, you having a good day? Hope so. It is such a nice morning outside, 64 degrees, sunny, no wind, that I think we're gonna take Blue on a walk across the street to pick up some Chick-fil-A. Ellie is not the best walker. She's, uh, you wanna explain, she's afraid of surface changes. Right, and also crossing the street. So the danger of crossing a street with Ellie is very high because she'll put on the full brakes and then she won't walk and you're literally <laughs> stuck in the middle of a intersection and it's just, uh, yeah, no. She's much better suited for rural areas than for urban just areas. Just grass. Yeah. So what we're going to do is put in Green River, Utah. There we go. Which would be this one right here. That is the next charger along the route and sort of a needed point for us. It's 100 miles to get there. Um, interesting. It says 27 miles on arrival, but we have 35 miles right now. Again, I'm not totally believing a lot of this stuff. But what we're going to do is uh, charge up quite a bit and we're gonna go get some chick-fil-a we're gonna let the truck know that that's where we want to go it's actually oh i see what it's saying we'd get there with 50 miles if we charged here to juice up a little bit but we already are charging here so let's end that let's put it in pet comfort oh range is too low for pet comfort Alyssa. Mm. what if i take it out of towing drive modes not available while plugged in to change. But I think if I put it into conserve, it would show, you know, way more miles than what we have now. That should be based off of percentage, not off of miles of range, I think. So what are we gonna do? I guess probably needs 50 miles of range. Well, maybe just leave the windows cracked for Ellie. How about that? Yeah, she should be She fine. won't bark. She doesn't even know what's it's going on around the truck. 66 degrees out, too. So yeah, it's, it's a bit brisk. So although dog mode couldn't turn on, leave climate on could. So I was able to turn on climate from my phone. Blue, you ready to go to Chick-fil-A? We gotta go that way and then over. Oh, yeah, we gotta go across, over, and then back. That doesn't make any sense. But all part of the uh, part of the infrastructure planning. Blue is crossing some big intersections here in Grand Junction. He's been all around the country, and now he can say he's been to the Grand Junction Chick-fil-A. And we are back completing a drive. Looks like a Polestar has arrived. The Ionic is the guy that's fixing the uh, charger. And uh, yeah, we're still juicing up. Need to, need to charge a little bit more, but we got some Chick-fil-A to tailgate, have some breakfast at the truck. 
And uh, looks like Ellie can't even see her. She's probably asleep. What a good dog. She really is a great dog, don't you think, Alyssa? We love Ellie, but she's just not that easy to bring out into the rest of the world. She, she loves her bubble. <laughs> Well, we are just hanging out, finished up some good breakfast. You had a nice little walk. Ellie, how you doing, sweet girl? Wait, I gotta see your sister, buddy. Hey, sweet girl, how are you? Yeah, I think we should take your leash off. I didn't realize that was still on you. And um, we are charged up to 81%. We have a 100 mile stretch to go, so maybe we'll charge up to 90%. And then, uh, then we'll head out. So these two really want my yogurt which they'll get the end bits, but not the beginning. Because it gives you the toots. And we don't want to smell your toots. We definitely don't want to smell her toots. Hers are stinky. Right, Ellie, are you doing okay? She's very upset that we left her, but we really can't have her crossing uh, intersections like that because she'll just go full brakes and cars will be coming and honking at us. It's just happened one too many times, so. It's safer she stays in the car. She's, I think she burnt her paws when she was a puppy, so different surfaces, surfaces scare her a bit. Uh, she hasn't gotten over it. We've tried training, trust me, you can give me all the tips in the world. We've already done them. It's just what it is, right, Blue? All right, we are going to risk it for the biscuit. We're only doing 50 kilowatts, which is painstakingly slow, and it's 100 miles exactly to go, and the truck shows 100 miles based off our previous driving. We also did lose some elevation coming into town, so we may just have to drive a little bit slower. There's no bailout options between here and there, and we should just double check that that charger's online and working before we head out, but we actually just spoke to some of our viewers who just bought this Polestar. It's the 2023 with the new wheels and design changes, and um, they're driving from Washington to Louisiana, and it's their first electric car. That's where they live, is Louisiana? They live in both places. So they bought the Polestar to commute back and forth. Interesting. Yeah. Where in Louisiana? They don't seem like Louisiana people. Yeah, he's a chemist, really cool guy. Oh. And so, um, Yep, or I should say a patent attorney for chemists, but understands the chemistry. Pretty neat. So basically, let's make sure that that charger is online and then uh, we'll head out. We've been here 41 minutes so far. Man, towing with an EV really sucks, doesn't it? And time to head out. 85% state of charge, added about 80 kilowatt hours, or I should say delivered, and about $25 charge. So let's hit stop here, and let's unplug. There we go. And off we go to Green River, Utah. As the parking lot fills up, that was perfect timing. up from them and a thumbs up from us nice 550 as well good cruiser Welcome to Green River, Utah, where it looks like we have a full station and there's a Lucid here. So an ID4, an XC40, and then a Lucid. How about that? We're just pulling in right here. And I think our plan is to kind of 
nose in to this spot and hopefully we can charge. It looks like the ID4 is using this charger and not that one. And so I'm hoping that one's available, but I know that one, last time we were here, that one was capped at 50 kilowatts. So yeah, let's, uh, let's at least see what happens. Worst case, we'll get 50 kilowatts and we'll have to hang here for a bit. This is always a pain point charger. So here we are. It says the maximum power of this charger has been reduced. I've just activated the charger in the app. Let's get this thing charging. And uh, we made it here with 20% state of charge, so plenty in the buffer. But uh, we had a big headwind early on, which killed efficiency, and then it actually went away, which was great. If we had a headwind the whole way, I would say we'd be pulling in at 10% or less, which is probably about as low as I'd wanna go with a trailer. One thing I'd like to do is just double check our tire pressures on our trailer as well. But the Lucid's looking great. There's an ID4, a C40, and a Lucid Air on the 19-inch wheels over there. So an aero spec Lucid, pretty cool. And uh, let's take a look at how fast we're gonna be charging here. It says the power was reduced. We're initiating. So let's see what it comes out to be. These are the older ABB units. This one's been operating in reduced power for a really long time. But, uh, I, and the screen's a little laggy. Let's see what the truck says. And, but no, I would say not really reduced. 201 kilowatts. That's pretty good, wouldn't you say? Mm -hmm. That's awesome. So we'll take the uh, we'll take the big power, even though the screen says it's not. That's a good problem to have. A pleasant surprise. Now we'll see if it drops down. Sometimes these ABB units can only sustain max power for a little bit before they derate. But at this point, it's a full house here. Unfortunately, the station is still full, and we're doing 36 kilowatts, but. Nothing we can really do here. Uh, this Lucid was owned or uh, driven by an employee. It's a mileage accumulation car, test vehicle, sensors all over it. And they're testing the software to the one that we kept waiting for to come. He said, hopefully in a month, it'll roll out to people. I know, pretty crazy. And so he's doing, um, you know, just testing out the highway assist feature, putting miles on it, testing software and uh, super, super nice guy. And then the Volvo folks are from Canada. They're really cool. And Ellie, how are you doing, sweet girl?